Welcome back R2 Builders. We're going to be talking about the Senna frame today. I am going to be making my frame for R2D2 out of the Senna plans, which are done by Mike Senna. You can find them on the Astromech Florum. They're in the blueprints section. The ones that I used are in the derivatives. You, so you go to blueprints, derivatives, the Senna frame files, and then you'll see one that says Senna frame by M. Henricks. Download those, they're really good. That's what I used. There's also a file which says CNC frame. You want that as well, which are in the M. Henricks section. What those do, it's just directions and it tells you how to put the frame together if you were to order the whole frame from Matthew Henricks. I decided to make a template first. So this is the template I used. It's a quarter inch piece of two by four MDF. So this is how I did mine. Depending on how you do yours, you need to make sure which cuts you're gonna make first. Otherwise you might lose your center points. Now get really hard for cutting out the radiuses. I know a lot of you are concerned about how to find the angles where well, you're gonna need a protractor to do that. This is the one I have right here. I put a mark right here and one up top here. I know it can get a little confusing, but there are different zero lines for this. And what I mean by that is if you're trying to find this angle right here, the zero point might be from here going this way. So you'd have to put your protractor on there and then tilt it whatever the degree says until you had that zero point. For example, it doesn't go say zero, 45, 70, 90, it doesn't work that way. Each one of these is a zero point for finding these angles and that's listed on the plan. You'll see it'll have an arrow going from here to here. If you wanna find this line right here, you wanna take your protractor, stick it right there, and then you just move this to find that angle. Make sure, of course, it is on the lines that you want it, that way your angle is right. This board here, this is for all the uprights. There are a total of 10 of those. You only see seven on here because a couple of them get reused several times. And even some of those are made out of MDF, so I can use this board to also use those that will be for the frame. When you're cutting MDF, always use dust mask. It's very important. This here is the template for the side plates. We're gonna cut that out first because this is how I have it on my board. I am loosely going around the edges on this because I'm going to go back and use my table saw to get the rest of the edges so it's a cleaner cut than with the jigsaw that I have. Here I'm just going on the outer edge of that and you can see I have some quarter rings up top there and then the top plate also. As you see here to the left I have the base plate and to the right I have the top plate for this. I'm going to cut it right down the middle because this is how this is laid out on the board. Here is my solid quarter ring. The way I have this laid out, I have the circle for that for the radius. It's just inside of the top plate, so I had to make sure I cut that out first so I get the radius correct. On this, it's really important to make sure that you cut the outside radius first and then the inside radius because if you do it in reverse, you're never going to be able to cut your outside radius. Here is the quarter inch frame ring that is cut. I am doing the outside of that and then I will do the inside where I have it laid out on the board. Right here is the bottom plate. I'm going around the edges to get that. As you can see, I have that center just inside of the square. As you can see, I'm slowly going around the edge of this. Sometimes I have to go back in reverse. The way the router works, you always want to keep that edge on the inside. So sometimes when I have, it's on the outside, you just have to go a different direction. Here I am again, I'm just continuing around the path of that circle for the base plate. Once I'm completed that, I can route out the inside to this. This is the last bit of the outside of the base plate. I'm just going around the edges of the pocket detail, which hold all the vents and things like that. Right here I'm cutting out one of the quarter rings, I got to do both sides of this. This is the cut ring, meaning it's got several slots in it that will also get cut out. This here is the quarter ring that is not cut, it is solid. I am going around the inside edge of this and I have the uh, alignment for that just inside of the circle. Here I am going around the outside of the top plate. After that, I'll go around the inside and get that cut out.
this here is the inside of the top plate and what I'm doing now is cutting out the inside circle using a 6 and 1 16th inner radius meaning you have to watch where your bit position is otherwise you're going to cut on the wrong side of your lines so just go around this make sure you're cutting right measure twice cut once as usual once this is done you'll just have to cut out the slots on the sides and then the leg slots So here is how I'm going to cut my slots for this. As you can see right here, I've got the slot lined out. I've made a router jig and I've clamped it on both sides here and on here. And this holds it steady, that way it doesn't move and this is how I'm going to cut these slots. So I've got a half inch plunge bit on this and I'm going to just plunge into the work and I plunge down into it and I slowly push forward as I meet the line where I need my blade to stop rotating at which is right here once you get to that line just pull up and you're done because this part right here is really just for clearance I'm going to freehand that out with the router it's not too hard to do you just have to be very careful with what you're doing and pay attention to your lines this here is a pocket detail, so it's not as important to get it perfect because all this does is give you clearance for the vents on the Mighty 10 plate. As I said, I am doing this freehand, so you just have to be careful, pay attention to your lines, make sure you don't go over. I did do that on my template, but I'm not too concerned since on the final frame it will look proper. got my table saw going here we're going to cut out these uprights I have seven of them on this template sheet there are a total of ten the reason there are only seven is because several of them get reused what I'm doing is cutting out the tops of them right here here I'm going back and cutting out the other sides of the uprights as you can tell the way I have this laid out they're fairly close so you have to do one side then the other after I get all these cut out and I get the tops cut out for each respective one, we're going to go back and put those in our jig that we have, and I'm going to cut out the slots for those two. Here you can see I just have several more of these left to do. Once they're cut out, as I said, we'll cut out the slots. This is the top section that I'm cutting out. After I cut that, you'll see there's one more lower that's down there that will have to get cut out. The blade's about to pass by that right now. We'll get those cut out and we'll do the slots. This is the eighth ring. This gets cut out right here. You can either use rounded edges or you can use square. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you get the depths of the cut right here. I'm using a jigsaw to do this make sure it's secure otherwise you're going to get some nasty vibration on it when you cut it you might break the piece off if you're using a router with a jig on this you're going to leave that little rounded edge if you want them square you just have to cut it off you can sand it i used a jigsaw to do that I'm cutting out the slots in the uprights. As you can tell, I've got a bunch of them lined up here. That way I can cut them all at once. This is going to be the center ring right here. And to keep me from cutting out all the spots that I don't want to, since I just traced the template from the bottom ring, what I did, I put an X right there so I know to only cut this because this is going to stay for the middle ring. You can see the X at the top there. Here I plunge the router down at that second line I was talking about. I simply pull the router back towards me and that completes the cut. I'm rounding out the middle of the middle ring using a seven and three quarter inch radius. Again, this is inside. So make sure you get your bit in the proper position with the radius when you do this. Otherwise, you're really gonna mess this one up.
Finally are the shoulder wings for the side plates. You can use either a jigsaw to cut these or your table saw. I used a jigsaw, but maybe a table saw would have been better for the very backs of them that meet up with these side plates where you meet up with the frame. So I'm cutting out the sides of this. I got my jigsaw. If you are using a jigsaw, make sure you have everything clamped down. If you don't, you are going to get some rattle when you do it. Just cut out all the little details of this. Once you're done with all the details, our two shoulder wings will be done and that will complete the templates for our center frame. This here is the back side of the shoulder wing. This meets up with the side plate. We're going to cut that out. After we cut that out, we have the other detail, which is on the opposite side. We also have that one slot that's actually going to be flat on the other side, so we need to make sure we cut that properly as well. I am cutting out that round section of the slot now. Once we cut it out, we have to go all the way through that, and that'll leave a small little round edge that we'll also have to file down or cut with a jigsaw. So you see the blade is going through that. It's going to go all the way through this shoulder wing, come out the other side, and then once it comes out, we just have to rotate this piece a little bit and cut out the small little section that's still got a little piece, which I'm doing right here. This is the other shoulder wing. It's a little less tricky than the first one. I'm just going to cut out the sides on each side, then I'm going to go to the back and then cut out the small little details. Once we do that, this template will be completed and we'll be ready to cut out the center frame on some nice real Baltic birch plywood. So here's the final templates that I have. I have some scrap pieces which are all laid out to the far left. Right here is the shoulder plate. This is the completed top plate. Over here is our bottom plate. I did make some mistakes on this. That's okay. It is just a template so it's very forgiving. As you can see right here, I made a boo-boo and cut out a section that should be there. Over here is the middle ring and you can see I have the two quarter wings, the cut and the solid, followed by the eighth wing, which is a little different than the one that I had in the video because as you can see over here, my dog ate the other one. Here are the two shoulder wings and as you can see from right here, I messed up on those so I had to remake those. Here are our seven uprights that we have. Each one of those, as you can see, is different. Out of the seven uprights, we are making 10 in which several of those will be the same. Thanks for watching, we appreciate it. Stay tuned for the video on actually building the template out of Baltic birch plywood, the real stuff, which is really hard wood. As always, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them.